Hey, man, I'm glad to have you on, man. Miss you. Love to catch up with you here as we talk about the 2007 Florida game that's going to be playing on CST tonight. You were such a big part of that game. You had a score. You had over five yards a carry. And as I was talking about while we were trying to get you back on the phone, you and Perilou had a dynamic package that game as well that was in the option game. And one of those pitches as we watched the game back, it was, man, it was well down the field. I don't know if you remember that. I don't know if you remember being nervous Perilou pitching that ball like five yards down the field to you. No, definitely. But also knowing Ryan, um, he's definitely uh, capable of doing something like that. So obviously, you know, from install and as many times as we, we ran it, I knew that he was uh, capable of doing that. But also trying to stay in a pitch relationship with him because he was able to do things with uh, on his own with his legs and his ability. And I obviously knew that we could extend it as the play went. But no, definitely exciting, uh, exciting game. Um, just everything even leading up to it and, you know, getting reports that was 100,000 people on the outside. And um, I actually feel privileged to be a part of it because this was like a coming, and I, I feel privileged to be a part of it and discuss this game with you because this was a, a definitely like a coming out party for you to the to the world. You know what I mean? We obviously knew what you could do um, inside the organization and uh, the leader that you were, but what you showed to the world that night, uh, I mean, that, that introduced everybody to Jacob Hester. No, man, I appreciate those kind words. But as you know, man, we had such a good group of backs. And the thing that made it special to me and I'll always cherish was it didn't matter if it was me, if it was you, if it was Trendon, if it was Charles, if it was Murph. We didn't really care who was in there as long as they were successful. When we played the game back, and, I, and I'm getting chills sitting here talking about it, we played the game back on the last fourth down they shoot the camera over to you and Charles and y'all are both like at the hashes yelling at us to pick up the first down. And I remember looking over to the sideline though, and this is a true story, seeing both of you get fired up and excited for us because y'all knew what play was coming. It was going to be low power. There was no question about it. And man, to look over to the sidelines and see y'all get hype. I'm telling you, man, that got me fired up and my juice is going. That's awesome. That makes me feel good hearing that. No, but you're absolutely right. I'm sure I don't know if our arms are locked up, what we were doing at that point, but it was just all in, like, exactly what you said. Just a team effort. It didn't matter who's, whose night it was. You know, obviously there are certain times where it, you were the starter, but there were certain times where Charles had it working, there were certain times where I had it working, and we were just, just happy for each other because we wanted to collectively do it. You know what I mean? It wasn't just about one guy. It was about the team, though, so you're absolutely right. What do you remember about that game? Because I'll be honest, kind of the theme of the show again has been us kind of struggling offensively to score points in the first half. We go into the locker room down 17 mm -hmm. to 7, and we had put up some long drives, but we had some missed yep. field goals, some missed opportunities. And I remember the defense really having our backs and continuing to stop Correct. that dynamic offense that Florida had. No, you're absolutely right. They definitely did a great job um, slowing them down, even with 17 points, like you're saying. Um, and you know, thinking in, in most situations that would be a, um, a big deficit to, uh, to come back from, but that wasn't the case. Defense did a great job of containing them and keeping it at 17. And like you say, we shot ourselves in the foot a few times, but we knew that if we kept pressing and if we stayed error-free that we could put up some points. And that's exactly what, uh, that's exactly what we did. Hey, when you talk about that atmosphere, and we just had Stelty on a little bit ago, and he talked about, because obviously when he was on the field, they were trying to disrupt what Tim Tebow was doing, but I think we all kind mm -hmm. of felt the electricity that was in that building that night when they announced that USC had lost to Stanford, and it was a height of Tebow time. Look, he was the most popular player in yeah. college football, so I think we all realized in that moment that this was going to be a special game if we could win it. No, you're, a you're absolutely right, 100%. We felt it. Um, the moment wasn't too big for us, but we definitely felt it. Like you're saying, with the you know um, with the spotlight being on Tebow and coming off of what he had did to us last year as well, going to Florida, we uh, you know we lose in '06, and um, he had kind of came out to the world in a sense. So with him coming back to Baton Rouge, you know, uh, I think people getting fans getting his phone number before that, and you know, just kind of little things that added to the intensity of it, and uh, for us to be able to do what we did said a lot about our program and gave us a strong push moving throughout that entire season, which would have to face more adversity as well. Catching up with one of the all-time greats over at LSU, Keelan Williams now here on Hanging with Hester. Keelan, as we transition, I want to talk about last year's LSU team and the job that Clyde Edwards-Elair did 
And he really did it in all aspects because, as we've talked about in this interview, LSU has kind of always been a running back by committee when they've had success. 03, 07, 11, all of those teams, well, we had multiple backs that played and we all had our different skill sets. This year was a little bit different. Kalada was mm-hmm. able to Eli play 93% of the time. As a former running back, I know I was just amazed by what he was able to do. How did you kind of watch uh, Clyde Edwards Elair do what he did last year? Oh, just really, really impressed. I think um, just everything you said, again, in the player that he is and able to do it from an individual standpoint. Obviously, you had guys behind him that could do a good job as well, but he was so valuable that you really didn't want him off the field. You know, just the threat that he gives to the defense. But him being a complete back, that early um, in his uh, football career in its entirety, not necessarily just college. You know, obviously, yeah. you, I'm sure you can attest to that as well. As you go to the NFL, you develop certain things and you put certain things in your, uh, you know, your skill set that makes you a complete back. But you saw that early from him um, doing what he did this year, from being able to run it, to be able to catch it out the backfield, um, pass protection. And uh, his yards after contact is just, yeah, just unbelievable. No, so definitely, um, I was I was really impressed by his uh, his performance and his effort. I know it was good for me to see because sadly we always talk about the running back position dwindling away in the NFL. So I was glad to see an LSU running back get drafted there in the yeah. first round. Hey, hey, they're gonna realize one day, Keelan, they're yeah. gonna need us running backs to bail them out. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So as as they continue to do that, and he does that, and the other guys that are still, you know, holding it down and being uh, that valuable threat, because that's something that running backs pride themselves on. You want to be a complete back. You know what I mean? You want to be able to catch it out the backfield. You want to be able to run it. Hey, you can go to me on fourth down. That is like the highest, um, you know, award that a running back can, you know, receive, you know, from his team and his coach and his being a complete back. And, um, that's what, uh, yeah, that's what we are. That's what we do. That's what we bring to the organization. So hopefully we'll, you know, start getting our credit. Hester. <laughs> Catching up with Keela Williams here. Keelan, when you look at LSU getting back to campus on June the 8th, getting those workouts back, you're a guy that works people out all the time. You do a great job there in Lafayette. And I'm going to give you a little bit of time here at the end to talk about what you've been doing lately. But you're a guy that gets people ready. Whatever their goal is, you get them to that point. Do you think right now coming in, there's going to be plenty of time to get these guys ready, even though they miss that spring workout, because they're going to have a full summer. Do you think that's going to be exactly what they need to get ready for that kickoff in September? Correct, yeah. And it's going to be it's obviously going to take a lot of effort on the guys just doing things from an individual standpoint. Right. Um, you know, just because they obviously miss some time and miss some valuable time, miss the spring ball. So as far as staying in the weight room, staying active, doing as much as they're possible is going to take a lot on that part. But uh, I think it's going to take a good balance of coaches not pushing too much because, you know, after, you know, after a few weeks, that body starts wearing down and shutting down. And obviously that's where the risk of, um, you know, um, injury uh, occurs right there. So I think it's going to be a good balance from coaches. And obviously we have the finest in, um, in the world there at LSU with Tom Moffitt. So he'll find that good balance in between keeping his foot on the gas, but also letting their bodies recover so they can go into the summer and have a successful season. All right, Keelan, as I mentioned, man, you're doing a great job. You've got your own place there in Lafayette. You're getting people to their goals. Kind of tell our listeners what you've been up to lately and how they can find out more about what you've been doing. Gotcha, yeah. So, no, I appreciate that. And uh, just doing, like you like you mentioned, doing some uh, personal training, working with the general public, but also working with uh, athletes as well, you know, helping them pursue their goals. And, um, you know, also I uh, train my son. He's getting ready to go to – to Nichols, he's going to be a cornerback there. So just awesome, teaching man. him and um, everything that I went through and uh, the things that I've learned that uh, helped me become the player, you know, that I was, just instilling that in him and just instilling it into the general population that wants to be healthy, happier, and just more confident in themselves. Can so, you get yeah. Can you get my calves to look like yours? Hey, you know what? They're actually, I'm trying to keep them nice and lean now. I'm trying to stay lean. Ain't so no I, way. I think that. But yeah, I, I think I think the muscle mass is decreasing those as well. But that's good. I don't believe that. I'm getting up in my older age. Yeah. See, there's no <laughs> way. See, I don't believe that. Well, man. Yeah, you're no, looking good. And yeah, staying with it. But I appreciate you having me on, Hester. No, nah, man. You know. No, nah, you're one of my guys, man. Me, you, and Charles, and. We'll even throw a young Stephen Ridley into that group and Quinn and, <laughs> yes, and Sean Jordan. Yes. Man, we had a close-knit group, man. I'll always appreciate those yeah. times because, like I said, this isn't lip service. 
whenever we had our running back by committee, man, I can tell you that we were as proud for the other guy as we were ourselves. And I've never look. There's been situations yeah. where it hadn't always been the case in other places I played, but it was Correct. during that time, oh six, oh seven at LSU. No, you're right, and that's what made us like separate everything. The talent was there, but that's what made us special. Like you're saying, like that genuine love that we had for each other, that we're going to go out our way to help each other. Somebody that knows something that, you know, putting a game plan or install, the other person's going to make sure they go out their way to help that. And like you're saying, you don't see that at other places because of that competition that brings a lot of jealousy and people want to see the other person fail. That that's, doesn't, doesn't touch what we were at all. Keelan, you're the man. Appreciate you hopping on with us. We have to have you back yes, on sir. soon. Uh, yes, sir. Have a good one. Have to thank you.